looking at vertical alignment and vertical curves, we're looking at a profile view, so this is looking at the side of the roadway, so the vehicles are going to be traveling from left to right across the board. The fundamental equation for designing or for, for estimating the minimum length for a vertical curve is L equals K times A. So in my opinion, a much more simple approach than looking at horizontal curves. It's just this one equation. And then the important part is how do we customize this equation for our individual scenarios? And what do each of these terms mean? L is the length. So when we're looking to establish the minimum length of a, of a vertical curve, and this is all measured horizontally, we're gonna use this equation. K is the rate of vertical curvature. And this is going to come from the green book. So everything that we need for K value is from the Ashto green book. And it's going to be specific to the type of curve. So whether we have a crest curve that has this concave down shape or a sag curve that has the concave up shape, we're going to get that K value. It's going to be different for different types of curves. We can also have it for stopping sight distance and passing sight distance. And then our A is a geometric characteristic. And it's the rate, it's the difference in grades, the algebraic difference in grades. So let's take a look at, at our drawing and, and talk about some examples with these values. So let's just assume that we have 5% grade, so we have a 5% upgrade. It meets this 5% downgrade. And the grades, the signs of the grades are very important. So we're gonna have plus 5% upgrade and a minus 5% downgrade for this one. This also ties into our next curve where we're gonna have a negative five meeting with a positive five. And again, just for simplification purposes, we're gonna assume these are 5% grades. Uh, that's fairly steep for a roadway and typically we'll have grades that are, are lower than those depending on the type of terrain that you're working with. For this, we'll also need to assume a design speed and we'll use 60 miles per hour. Uh, the Green Book has a, a wide variety of design speeds that you can use. For this curve, A, the difference in grades, we're going to take the absolute value of minus 5, so that G2 minus G1, five, minus 5 minus 5 gives us negative 10. We're going to take the absolute value of that, so A is equal to 10. Similarly for our sag curve, It's going to be the absolute value of 5 minus negative 5, and that again will give us 10. So A for each of these curves is 10. L is going to be K times A, so we need to know K. From the green book, we can look up and find that for a crest curve at 60 miles per hour has a K of 151. And what that K represents is you need 151 feet, when we're, when we're dealing with English units, 151 feet to, to accommodate a change in grade of 1%. And that's why we're going to multiply these two together. So L equals K times A. The K is 151. The A is 10. So the minimum length of curve for this curve is 1,510 feet. We can go longer than that. If we go very long though, we do start to worry about the drainage issues because we're gonna have a, a flat spot, uh, an extended flat spot, so drainage may be a problem there. But we don't wanna go any shorter than this. And what we're worried about for a crest curve is as you are, as you are approaching the crest of the curve, you have enough sight distance to see an obstruction on the other side. So what we're, the scenario we're worried about would be here's our vehicle, 
and we want to make sure that this vehicle can see far enough along to see some hazard that's in the roadway. So we're looking at the driver's height of their eyes, seeing some obstacle. This is what we're dealing with when we're looking at a crest curve. And the nice thing for us, we don't have to really worry about this. The calculations are available, the equations are available in the green book, but this 151 builds in these assumptions. The object that we're looking for, two feet off the ground, and the eye height of the driver. Similarly, for the sag curve, we need to know our K value from the green book. And for a 60 mile per hour design speed, we're gonna have a K value of 136. So for this curve, we're gonna have K of 136. Again, the equation stays the same, even though we have a sag curve, we still have L equals K times A. But in this case, the K is 136. The A, the algebraic difference in grades is 10. So we're gonna have a minimum length of 1,360. These are both the same grades, same design speed, but crest versus sag is what we're dealing with. And the thing we're worried about with for stopping sight distance, and both of these are the stopping sight distance K values. Passing sight distance is much larger if we're looking at a two lane road. And what were the scenario for a Sag curve is we're worried about nighttime and we're actually worried about as the vehicle is driving along, where does its headlights shine? Where is the roadway going to be illuminated so that the driver can see any hazard on the other slope? So what we're worried about is having enough length so that our headlights can see far enough in front of you so that the driver can respond to any hazard. So again, everything ties back in vertical curves with this simple equation, L equals K times A. K is the rate of vertical curvature. We're gonna look that up in the green book for different stopping site, either stopping site distance, passing site distance, whether it's a crest or a sag, and then the associated design speed. And then A is also specific to each curve. That's the algebraic difference in grades. We're gonna subtract those two uh, grades, the entrance and the exit grade for each vertical curve and use our equation L equals K times A to find that minimum length of curve.